Now, I'm asking, answering the question, how to handle our feelings when we do evangelism and then we are rejected and people don't want to believe in Jesus and then we are discouraged. How do we handle that? Uh, I want to tell you that anyone who does evangelism will be rejected many times. Any person who does evangelism will be rejected many times. I have been rejected many, many times. The point is, how do we handle that? First, we know that because many people go on the wide road. The majority of people won't go to heaven. It's a sad thing, but it's a true thing. That many people won't go to heaven. It's a small group of people who go to heaven. It's a sad thing. God is sad about that, and we are sad about it. So how do we handle that so that we are not discouraged? First, we need to have confidence in God. That God is good. God comes to us. We can experience God. And we pray for people. People can experience God and experience change. So the first evangelism effort and discipleship efforts should be done in the church. For people who are already coming. They already are like the fishermen go out to fish. And this fish are already in the pond. They're right in front of you. So these are the easy targets. So first we help them. When you care about them, don't just preach to them. If you just preach to them, they won't want to come. But you listen to them, care about them, respond with love and care, concern, be concerned about them. That way they feel loved and then they will respond to you. Then you'll have a stronger sense of accomplishment to change people's lives. So we need that, you know, when you do that in church, then you, it will encourage you. But sometimes you might be discouraged too, because there are some Christians who are very lazy. No matter what you do with them, they are still lazy. Then what can we do? When we are rejected, what can we do? You know, one time when I did evangelism, I was rejected. And then God gave me this thought, because I did feel bad at that time. And God gave me this thought, when you are rejected, even though the person rejects you, but God is happy with you. God is happy that I have done evangelism. And also one day in heaven, if this represents someone who doesn't believe in Jesus, he will stand in front of God. And, and then he's, he's not, he doesn't believe in Jesus, so he's not saved. But God will say, Pastor Yip or someone else has witnessed to you, but you did not believe. So my witness, even though did not turn the person to Jesus, is a testimony of God's work, and it glorifies God. It glorifies God when we have witnessed. But if someone went to, you know, cannot go to heaven, but no one has witnessed to the person personally, then... Although God can say, I have shown you my work in the universe, I can show you the work of God in the churches, but no one has witnessed to the person. The work of God in nature and in the churches is a witness to the person. But if someone has witnessed to the person, or more than one person has witnessed to the person, then God's name will be glorified. God said, my servants have witnessed to you, you don't believe. So. God told me, if someone rejects you, tell yourself, what you have done has glorified God, even though he doesn't believe in Jesus. What you have done has glorified God, so I can rejoice because of that. Even though I feel sad, but I can say, thank God, I have the chance, and I glorify God, and God is pleased with that. So that way, I would not be affected by this negative feeling. I have to handle it, so that when I finish evangelism, I don't feel bad. Actually, usually, cold calls of evangelism has a very low percentage of success because people don't know you. When people don't know you, it's very hard for them to believe in Jesus. Evangelism to people who know someone in a church, like someone in a church says, oh, I have a friend that has sickness, that has emotional problem, that has demons. 
Can you come and visit? That has a much higher chance. The reason is because that person was recommended by a friend in a church. So this person who has this problem knows this person, knows this Christian, and this, this non-Christian has more faith in us when we go to visit them. So this kind of evangelism is more effective to people whom we already know or someone knows them, it's much more effective. So we have to create opportunities like this. For instance, we can train the Christians in a church to have home gatherings, to invite the friends to come to eat something at home, and then share what they experience in Jesus, and then invite them to accept that we can pray for them. That way, witnessing to friends and neighbors and also to people who are needy is much more effective. When you do that, then you, have, you see more results and then you'll be encouraged more. But even when we don't see any result, we say God is happy because I glorify God.